Coming to you from Crash Studios in Music City, USA, Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. On this episode, legendary rock drummer and founding member of the Hooters, David Osikanen. And now, Rich Redman. What is up, rock and rollers? Yep, it's that time. It's time for another exciting episode of the Rich Redman Show, where we talk about all things music, motivation, and success. I'm talking about people that have impacted the world in a major way, and this is long overdue because this is a childhood hero of mine. Um, this gentleman is a founding member of Philly's own The Hooters, yeah. and, a, and a pop rock band that he's been playing with for over four decades. You know them from their songs Day by Day, and We Dance, All You Zombies. They had this pretty cool little record in 1985 called Nervous Night, sold millions of copies, and of course, today's guest, our friend David Osikinen. What's up, wow. buddy? You're speaking Finnish. I love it. I'm yeah. <laughs> You're speaking Finnish. Thanks I, for having me, Rich. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, look, listen, man. I'm so honored to be with you, man. You are one of the guys that I really pay attention to. Pay attention to that's out there playing, and I mean, I, I don't think I know a a, a, a busier person than you. Oh, I mean, man. all the things that you do out there touring with Jason and 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 playing your ass off, I might say. Oh, thank and, you. Uh, so, and, and not only that, you're doing motivational speaking, and uh, and you're a good dude, man. You know, meeting you <laughs> at Nam a couple times, it we was did. great. So your enthusiasm is like mind blowing. So oh, I man. was when you hit me up about doing this, I was like, "Are you kidding me? Where do I sign up? Where do well, I pay?" <laughs> you know, it's crazy because you know this is like I, I say this a lot, but if you know if you if you show up with a firm handshake and you know you're a person of your word and you keep putting in the work and you keep showing up, eventually your heroes will become your friends. You know, and this was like you were a hero because I. I would watch you as a child of MTV. Yeah. Um, you know, the Hooters was born in, in uh, 1980. The, you yeah. guys birthed yeah. the band. Yeah. And, of course, you had this amazing um, platform called MTV. You know, Nina Blackwood, amazing. J.J. Jackson, Martha yeah. Quinn. I'm sure you got to meet yeah. all these folks. Yeah. And I would watch you on Live Aid and Amnesty International. And I would look at these the audiences and how they were reacting to your very musical, very physical drumming. And I was like, man, I don't know how to do that. I want to do that because, because you know, I was you know practicing the rudiments and I was in the school yeah. band, but I was like, how, what's the journey from learning a paradiddle to playing Live Aid? You yeah. know what I mean? So yeah. you were a big, big yeah. hero, and the fact that we're spending this time together is a really cool thing, man. Oh, oh my God. I, I don't even know what to say to that. You know, I mean, I, when you say the word hero, I mean, you did, we, we chatted about that El Paso show. Yes, where, where I saw you guys at the El Paso Coliseum in 1985 yeah. or 1986. And I was blown away because you remember, like I used to set up, I don't do this anymore and maybe happen again, but I used to set up on the, on the left side of the stage. Yeah. Right? Sideways. And, and, and you, you, you had it down. You yeah, you're playing a yellow four piece kit. You had, you had my symbol set up down yep. and you knew it all. And it was like, wow, this guy either does his homework, but you were zeroed in. And uh, I remember that show. I remember we played, we we didn't always do the song all the songs from Nervous Night, but we played "Don't Take My Car Out Tonight." That, that we played that song, which was you know the record company was like you know that's gonna be a single, which it never was, but we would put it in the set once in a while. But you know it had this intro, tap boom boom, tap boom boom, tap boom boom, to, and then dug into it, you know. Yeah. But I remember seeing you play, and man, you said physical. I mean, you, you, you lay into it, and you, you, every little emotion musically, you could see. And and listen, you know, music. You know, if you're not passionate about doing it, you know, why do it? You know, right? And you watching you do that thing, your whole body is into it. You know, and I, I love watching drummers like that. I. You, you mentioned Amnesty International. I mean, as a drummer, you know, they were great drummers. I remember hanging out with Steve Jordan there and some, you know, guys that I loved. But I, I, I remember Peter Gabriel played that show and I yeah. was on the side of the stage and, and Manoush Keshe was playing drums. And he was he came out and he was playing this really. I remember he had hot rods right at, at, at Giant Stadium and he played these really skinny sticks he was playing and he started playing uh red rain 
you know, that song Red Rain. And the way he was just really fluent around the kit, like just, you know, almost like he was on, uh, like floating on the kit. Yeah. You do that too when you play. Oh, man. You're like, have that motion. You know, it's like a whole body experience. Body well, well, you too. I mean, that's man. You, you're, you've got a very like back in the day. Like you, you must love the color yellow. It must be your favorite color, right? Because, <laughs> well, that, yeah. well, I love Tony Williams. Rest in peace. Yeah. The great jazz drummer Tony Williams was always my when I was a kid. I remember I, it was I. I um, I remember driving. I lived in. I grew up in Philadelphia, outside of Philadelphia, and I I would drive up to New York, either Manny's or Alex's music. And I I remember buying a Gretsch, a yellow Gretsch drum set, and uh, I I had to have yellow because of Tony. You know, I just <laughs> I I loved him so much, and I just saw him play at Temple with uh, with uh, uh, Wayne Shorter and and Herbie Hancock and Ron Carter, VSOP. I think that was the name of the band, and and I had to have that drum set. Except I couldn't get the three floor toms; it was yellow. You know, and so for a long time, then when I first got my first deal with drums, Tama uh, said, "Hey, listen, we'll, we'll make, we'll, we'll give you drums," and they said, "We'll even paint them the color that you you want." And I went, "Oh, paint them yellow." Yeah, you know? no, those drums had a, had a car. lot of. They had a lot of snap and a lot of a, yeah. a lot of attack, and we were both DW artists. And I, and what, like yes. I said last night, I went down yeah. a rabbit hole for about three hours. I watched every live Hooter video on the internet. <laughs> for, for you know, so you watched me rush <laughs> from, from night. No, the thing is, is it, it, it was first of all. Let's we'll address that in a second, but. Um, you had you would either wear a yellow shirt, you had yellow pants, or you yeah, had yellow drums, and you had three. Yeah. Uh, in a couple of eras of the Hooters, you'd have three toms up top, like the Liberty DeVito type of I did thing. That and for one, a little bit, yeah. One Lib's floor my, tom. Another one of my heroes. I love yeah. Liberty. He's a good buddy, like you. Well, of course, yeah. And, and now you're back to a, a four piece kit or one up top and two on the bottom. It, you know, one up, one down. It was it, that just became, you know, that's that's the easiest thing. And, and and I'm still going out and doing gigs. And if I show up and there's a drum set there, it's just easy. So what do you want? I said, just one up, one down. Easy. And, that, you know, that's, that's just the easiest thing. So, um, it's tough when you're playing like you know different drums and setups so I, I end up playing gigs so that's what i opted but i always been like a fan of i love charlie watts ringo or you know there there's what we what i grew up listening yeah. to so that was the setup you know that was the that's all you that that's all you need everybody's I, like you know I what would you use what's your setup but I, I say i say man yeah. it's, it's basically a ringo setup like except i add the floor tom in the arenas yeah. for the Good. That's you know, really the, nice. The second floor, I like right? that. I might, I might steal that from you. I like that. I see some guys that I, I've been using for years. I got this really cheapo snare drum that I got in like 1978 that I took the bottom head off. And it's not Timbali. even around anymore. It's like got some weird shape. But it's, you know, it, there's a song we had, like, anytime you hear like a timbali type sound or like a what i call the dread snare that was the um was that drum i was a big fan on Lin, uh, for, uh lynn quentin quincy jones uh um uh, peter tosh bob marley that yeah. kind of thing so it was easy to play the snare cross stick thing and have that little thing you do to the left man yeah. with it cross thinking on that you know for sure but you know so we'll get well i want to get to the influences of how the hooters were formed and how the reggae ska thing entered your songwriting but you talked about you know your tempos and i think you just told me recently and you know the hooters have been playing together for 42 years you, you said you started working with the click live just yeah. recently but i'm looking at yeah. all these videos from 1980 1990 you are solid as Thank a you. rock and you guys are on you guys are probably on yeah. wedge right i mean you're on wedges a lot well, i'm glad you brought that up because you know it's funny uh, uh my friend ben newberry who works for bruce springsteen he does uh little steven and B gary talent i i never knew i just assumed that bruce was out using uh in ears. ears they don't use okay only a few of them max uses them i mean i couldn't have done done uh he's he's upstairs right now having dinner with my wife which is kind of cool i mean <laughs> picking his brain on everything um but the interesting thing is like when I played Live Aid, uh, I was I was the kind of the beta tester for future Sonic in ears. Yeah. Myself and Willie Wilcox, who works with who was Todd Rudgren's drummer. Oh my god. And that day, I was uh, Marty started Marty Garcia, who is the founder of that company, he he started having me I was hardwiring into a mixer. And at Live Aid, I, I had a debate within my head. Am I going to go with the wedges, which I had the wedges, or do I use the in-ears? 
and I decided to put the in ears in. And I was, I think, the only drummer at Live Aid using in ears. Now, everybody. Wow. That was bold. Was the only one. Check it out sometimes. You look at videos like Madonna's doing all the thing with choreographed dancing, everything. No in ears. Uh, I, I remember, like, I was set up the way I usually set up. And Rob started all you zombies. I'm telling you, if I didn't have those in ears, I would have been starting on some like odd beat. I could hear everything. In ears changed my world back then, you know, like yeah. anything else. You're not, you know, you're not hearing all the outside sounds. It wasn't as great as it is now where you can dial in room no sound and all these things. But uh, in ears, you know, are, are it took a little adjusting for us and also playing with the click live. You know, it's different than the studio I have found. Like, you go up and it's like, wait a minute, you know, all this adrenaline and the guys are up in the front flying. It's like holding back a pack of horses. You know what oh, I mean? yeah. And I mean, it probably had to, you probably had to taint, like, go into rehearsals for that tour that you started using the ears and be like, guys, you know, we're all, I think as in a general rule, we're up like two to four clicks, which is fine. That's yeah. a nice, that's a nice yeah. window for the live energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but everybody's got to be a team player and be willing to kind of control that horse, you know? And it's yeah. just like these crazy kids these days, man, there is so many tracks going out the front of house, right. percussion, uh, mm. soft synth, strings, mm. background mm. vocals. What I liked about you guys, you were just a lean and mean rock band playing yeah. mega um, venues yeah. with wedges. And yeah. you were so <laughs> tight. Oh, well, that, you know, well, that comes from like, as you know, from playing a lot. I mean, we before we got even signed, we were playing all the time. I mean, probably about six, six days a week. You know, I, I started taking lessons off Joe Casadas in New York and I used to grab a train from Trent from Trenton up to New York City. And I'd run up to, to uh, 46th Street to take my lesson. And I, I remember I, I, I went in for my lesson with Joe. And uh, the modern drum shop, and I went in there, and I and I, like I, I had this Buddy Rich book that we would do together, and I remember I I was like playing, but I didn't, I didn't like I didn't practice or I didn't study. And I remember he looked at me and he like, I think he hit me with a stick to be honest with you, <laughs> like said, a, like you a nun. Show yeah. up, and whatever, but I didn't get a chance to practice. But we were, I said, Joe, we were playing six nights a week. You know, he said, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> you got to find time to practice. But long story short, I mean, we were tight because we played all the time. We were doing it. And then, but, but as you know, you know, over the years, I mean, we were doing it for a long time. And, and, and back then, you know, you weren't getting a click through the, through the wedges, you know, the in ears and, and as sound and did the digital world changed that for musicians where you could hear things where the audience isn't hearing. So, you know, but that's a whole, you know, you had to get better as a musician. You have to settle down a little bit. And yeah. I don't know about you. And I think I'm pretty, I'm pretty wired out naturally. Like life is like, let's go. You yeah. Know? Oh, you know totally. Yeah. yeah. And yeah these, we're the drummers, so, man. Come on. So, yeah. Yeah. It's right. And, and plus to boot, I'm a little dyslexic and, and, you know, a little ADD as you could tell, but, you know, playing, you know, playing those live shows, man, you had to, you know, you had to, you know, we were playing together. We had to use the monitors and stuff like that. It was a different ball game back in the day. Yeah, man. It's and you know, I I I, I really respect it. Like, so how did the how did you get the? Because you're a founding member. So how did it all come together? Because I know there's those yeah. two pivotal figures in the band, Eric that, and Rob. Eric and Rob, who you know yeah. also did, um, you know, also Cindy wrote those Lauper. the time after time, and what if yeah. God was one Rob of us? Wrote it. So, you know, amazing songwriters, but mm. there's that reggae ska influence. Like, yeah. so were you guys all digging that? Like, you, let's all check out Sly and Robbie and like, yeah. let me get this yeah. Timbali. Like, how did yeah. that all happen? Honestly, I think Sly Dunbar still thinks he played drums on Girls Just Want to Have Fun Sydney. Because <laughs> he came in, you know, so many drummers would come and cut it. And he did cut a version of it once. But he, uh, Rob Hyman would spend his summers in Jamaica as a kid. Oh, okay. And he had this incredible record collection. And when we first started playing together, he would turn me on to, uh, you know, Linton Kwesi Johnson uh, or, or, you know, just different reggae artists and all kinds of stuff. And he had an amazing record collection of this stuff. And we we just got into it. Those guys happened to see Selector, a, a, a British – it was when the British – uh, punk thing started happening in yeah. 77, 76. They saw Selector and the specials. And after Baby Grand, the band that they had before the Hooters, more of like, um, you know, a session, Rick Murata played drums with them. It was a more of a session thing. They wanted to get into the live, you know, just focus more on a live thing, connecting with the audience. And they were really in the reggae, which, 
you know, in turn, they turned me on to that stuff. I mean, sure. I loved it. You know, uh, I, the police were starting to happen and, oh, yeah. and, and Bob Marley was starting to get a, a bunch of airplay where we live. And, uh, but Rob was very uh, uh, influential on my life as far as like, music tastes you know i started listening to that and listening to bass lines you mentioned robin uh, uh uh robbie and sly you know listening to what the bass player is doing that kind of stuff it was um it was like you know developing space in your playing but it was all groove you know yeah. it was pretty amazing stuff but well, it was rob rob hyman who was that you I, know, I guess you know eric and i really loved it and i basically you know they were coming out of one thing that was a complete different musical animal and wanted to get into something else and it just worked you know man well yeah i mean the way it, it all is all peppered in there is fantastic and um oh just before i forget because we're on we're, we're on to the hooters and how this all happened but uh i just interviewed a mutual friend of ours he's been a dear friend for a long long time but he also studied with joe casada's tony mora I oh no way yeah he tony with joe too yeah tony morris study with he's like oh you gotta tell david we, we both study with the same teacher mm. and it was like the you know yeah. the, the louis belson books and the yeah. Buddy rich books oh yeah all that you stuff. had to do it with, with joe you'd come in and he was big on doing the um like you had to do you do the you know uh you had to do non-bounce with him always like the book and you did it together you know i'm sure tony talked about that and it was that yeah. whole like full stroke half stroke quarter stroke thing that you did with joe yeah. and uh i'll tell you i it was a lucky day where i i just happened to walk in and and i recognized him from the slingerland you never know how you're going to be how you're going to influence somebody or how they're going to see you like i'm thinking about young people seeing you like i walked into the modern drum shop and joe was putting sticks into you know their their place cleaning up yeah. and i said are you the guy I was 20, probably about 21 years old or something. I said, aren't you the guy that's in the Slingerling magazine? It's Gene Krupa, Buddy Rich, Brett Deems, and Joe Casadas. And he said, yeah. And I said, do you give lessons? And he said, yeah, be here next week at 11 o'clock, 25 bucks. <laughs> I was like, you know what Tony said? He goes, Joe would teach anybody who had 25 bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I already, yeah, like, I already right. like this character. Oh, dude. And oh, my God. He was amazing. Well. And it's funny, uh, uh, my wife and I had dinner with Joe. It would come back about 10 years ago. My wife surprised me with a uh, surprise lunch. Joe and his wife, Kathy, met met me and my wife at, at, a, at a hotel in, New, in, in, uh, in New York, and we had dinner. And Joe was 88 at the time. And he gave me a hug, and he goes, Dave, I'm 88, and I don't take a pill. <laughs> I'm 88, and I don't take a pill. Oh, my God, that's amazing. Like, that's Joe. And he was as solid as a rock. Yeah. You know, you, you, it's just amazing. I mean, you could pull, there's a video on YouTube of Joe Casadas playing a solo. I forget who he's playing with, but, but he, he, he's just so remarkable how he does that. The, you know, we do he's around triplets around the kit and how fast he plays. And yeah, he was he was a freak of nature, man. Did, did, did we lose him? Is he still around? Uh, you know what? I've been trying to if anybody knows out there, I've been trying to he was living in Ohio after his wife passed away. Mm -hmm. And then he was down in florida and and i haven't been able to i haven't been able to track him down i've been i've been trying to find him because he was like i remember the first time when, when we got our golden platinum records i made sure i got one for him it's you always know, nice I, to share that stuff with your friends family but really your uh, teachers professors uh, you, know. you know he i had a couple of the teachers before joe but joe was the one that kind of straightened me out i you know like i wanted to learn how to do a real proper double straight role and yeah. i when i'd see buddy play and how buddy would play these buzz roles and do this thing is like how do you get there you know and it's like how do you do that and joe really knew how to get there you know yeah. i mean hard work practice 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 but but he he kind of shortened the load but he used to say one day i ran in because you know they, these young kids they want to go from a to z they don't want to do any other stuff that's what in the middle saying. no i mean it's it's and i sound like that now i'm like get off my lawn but i, I mean i feel <laughs> i feel like i lost my youth you know chasing the you know machine gun perfect open stroke yeah. roll and then yeah. once you get it you've yeah. always got it you could take oh, a month man. off and it's it, yeah. it comes back really yeah. quick but it's uh yeah. You know, yeah. when I tell the kids, it's like, okay, you know, you hear that funky, you know, 30 second trap hat stuff that is happening on the hi hat. It's not going to work with a press roll on a hi hat. Mm -hmm. It's got to be yeah. incredibly open. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 I love you. Listen, man, I love that about you. I love watching you play. You have, you know, you, you, you got it all going inside out. 
and that kind of stuff and it's great oh, i man. love like there's like that's one great thing a lot, not a lot of great things about the internet but you know checking out instagram and you know um it, it's like you know my glenn sobel you know do you know glenn glenn oh, yeah, is yeah. like a freak of nature with his left hand and doing things like that yeah yeah you know i met him when he, he found out i did a, a, a an alice cooper record and we had this really nice interaction one day at, at nam probably the yeah. one where i ran into you right right so we've been in touch but he's another one that does this stuff that you know taking it to another level with his left hand you know and and i, I just i admire that so much you know because you know that you gotta work at man so, you you just, you totally at. what yeah. was the uh so so you've done a lot of sessions you've worked with some other people besides a little bit i lived in la for a little bit and, 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 and alice and, cooper rod stewart cindy lopper yeah. taj mahal yeah. patty patty smith now the video i saw of you guys doing a, this it was a song with patty where did patty the children smythe, right? go patty smythe sorry yeah yeah, um, yeah where did the children go oh, oh dude, yeah so so dude, that was you are that so you... sassy and freaking su but yeah. how do you not love her oh how do i play it oh, dad her <laughs> voice is incredible it's it's oh, like no. the soulful version of a man gargling with razor blades <laughs> she sounds hey, great man. yeah he, he, listen that they were great times that that was i remember that was a thanksgiving show we did in our hometown you know when you come to your hometown all your friends come and you yeah. want to play great <laughs> I remember our lighting rig half of it went down we kept on playing it was like this mtv concert and patty who was well patty lives in new york and you know her husband's john McEnroe, and she's you know she's still making music and doing an amazing artist great voice she back then you know she she spent some time in philadelphia and she was produced by rick chertoff our, our producer so yeah. um when we had when we had this song when eric and rob had uh where Do the children go she was like the obvious person to come in and sing it at the end and man she ripped it up i mean anything she does she's i used her on my in the pocket project i had her sing uh, expressway and expressway to your heart and yeah. you know she's just like just is so much soul in that in that so voice. Oh, soulful! Yeah, oh my God, yeah. I love the band Scandal. I I really enjoyed oh my that. God, band. great Tommy Price! Come on, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, Tommy Price playing drums. Tommy was just some of the stuff that he would do. You know, I I, I you know Keith Keith Mack played in that band, and, but I, I you know I I love that stuff. You know, so yeah. it's um and Patty that band was terrific, and she she's still great. But we we had a great time making that record. And where did the children go? That show was. <sighs> it brings back great memories you know oh man will you i mean you you got a book in you are you gonna do the uh you gonna do the book <laughs> you know it's really weird right now and then it's it's a bit humbling because you get stuff like I, i'm i i just company asked me if i would do a, a, a they're doing a little documentary on moi which is kind That's of great odd. We're, we're yeah we're filming it right you know i think just and, and and it's not about the hooters it's just about coming up as a drummer i talked about the joe stuff and i mean all this stuff early on but yeah we're kind of admits they're gonna they're gonna That's follow great. me around till september and uh we were you know we're going to europe uh, the hooters will go to europe and there's probably some stuff in the states that we'll be doing and uh it's it'll be interesting because i've never done anything like that that's but awesome a book, rich i've been i've been working on something are you talking about like a, a writing like a, music book or a, a story book? like a like a biography like you know kenny did sex drugs and rock and roll you yeah know. yeah yeah well listen you know I, I i you know the weird thing is you can't tell my story like i had a a, re a, a period of life where i had went through some struggles with drugs and alcohol and i got through that a survivor from that you know nice. and sometimes you know publishers or whether they want to get into what's like the dirt but you know like part they of want, that they want the bad stuff get the sensationalism yeah yeah you know and and i want to be like you know i not that i don't want i don't want to i don't want to avoid it I, and but i want i want to talk about it and be, encourage people that listen man you, there's there's a way out but um but yeah that book at some point i've been working on for a long time it's just like i have to finish it and i've had a buddy of mine who's a writer helping me organize some things that obviously i need right. and uh maybe someday you know it's something I'm, I'm i'm constantly i don't know if you know this but like two months ago i had to have my gallbladder removed which i didn't really, oh god oh it was horrible it was horrible i played a weekend gig i played new year's eve with annabella from bow wow wow i don't know if you know Bow oh, Wow. yeah wow. dude and i was like for for the last few years i was thinking that i had some sort of you know i was just allergic to certain foods and whatever and i got really really sick and it culminated in you know a weekend of hell 
and uh, I ended up being rushed to the emergency, and they took a, a bag full of stones out of my body, oh. and seven of the stones were stuck in my bile duct. So I had a three-hour surgery where they're picking it out. Unfortunately, they didn't have to cut me open too much, but um, you know, recovering from that has been <laughs> been Damn. like. You know, I feel good now. I did a session today. I feel feel great. Oh, thank God. Well, what, but, what does the gallbladder do, man? What is it like? What is it? What the heck does that thing do? Do we need it? No, you don't freaking need it. It's like, just this weird know, thing that we have. A buddy of mine, he said, listen, Dave, he said, why the hell they don't just take that out of you the first time? You know, come on, hey, gallbladder out, appendix out. You know what I mean? It just caused problems, you know? So yeah. I don't know why I got off on that and I apologize. No, but, I think, you know, this is the, it, you know, it, we're, was, it was, it was two months ago and I feel great, but it was really the hardest thing that I ever been through ever physically. It, it, it sucked. The first, you know, I lost like 19 pounds afterwards. Oh, wow. and, you know, it, it, it was rough. Thank God we got people that are, love being a surgeon as much as we love drumming. Oh yeah, you, know, you have somebody that was like, "I'm going to make you well," and they do it. So remarkable. Hats off to the medical people. Oh my God! Of course, my everybody in my family is either a doctor or a nurse or works in the hospital. Yeah, my, my mom You've was got a, a nurse. Lovely or, family, by the way. Forty. Well, you thank know? you. Forty five years. You know, I see your posts of your mom and dad. Just the way you are with your family. You know, I I was like, you know, my rest in peace. My mom and dad have passed away, but they used to come to shows. And when I saw you with your parents, your your mom was like, she reminds me of my mom. The way my mom used to go. She, my mom used to do the laundry for the band. Oh my god! Well, my mom would cook for the band. You know, she's like, uh, yeah, she's like Italian. Great. You know, but it's like I. You know, man, I, I, I feel like I'm so fortunate to be at this age and have parents that are, you know, 75 and 77. I'm right not on. looking forward to the, yeah. the the bad day. I'm not looking forward to that. At all. Listen, you know, it, it, and and thank goodness that you know we have family and and parents that really supported our dreams. You yes, know? 100%. I mean, that, that was like you know, uh, I I know there were some, some points my dad used to go. Yeah, you're spending way too much time in that bar, you know, but at some time, you know, but then I, I remember when he went, ah, that's a double platinum. That's a, you know what I mean? <laughs> he liked when there were two records million records. Yeah. They like yeah, when that yeah, happens. It worked, yeah. it worked yeah. out. Knock on wood, you know, but, yeah. um, you know, you need the, 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 they were very encouraging. And I still remember, you know, tell my folks that like, you know, what are you doing? I'm going to play the drums. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's it. What, did, what did they do? What did your folks do? My father was a construction worker. You know, my dad, he's a remarkable guy. And I think probably my tenaciousness about life in general came from really my father came over from Finland in 1953. He came over, uh, my mother sent for my mother a year later. And uh, my father was just like, you know, putting roofs on houses, putting putting siding on houses. And, you know, he, he, he you know, he, in Finland, you know, he, he I think it was 13. He quit school and he was fighting the Russians, you know, Jeez. it was like crazy stuff. And I remember he had to go back. He got like what is equivalent of what a, a purple heart is in Finland, but he went back to get that. And, uh, you know, he, you know, he did well for himself, you know, somehow he ended up retiring out of the carpenters union. And, you know, my mother was, a, you know, what they call homemaker back in the day. You yeah. know, I don't know if that's, just you know, politically well, correct. I can't anymore, see anything you, anymore. Just go ahead. But I no, know, you, dude, it's crazy. No, I mean, but they it, were it, just the, the salt of the earth. Just my father and mother, when they moved down to Florida, I used to kid my father lived in Venice. He used to call him the mayor of Venice. You know, he's <laughs> riding his bike. Yeah, my my <laughs> parents the are they're in a they're in a, a Port Charlotte, Florida. So it's like you know, <sighs> it's it's almost like you you know you, you hit seventy and you you got to move to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I I mean. Although I was just down in Delray, my, down and I went down to Delray for for ten days, and I get it. You know, I was like really nice, and I, you know, I almost didn't want to come back up north because, you know, here it, it was, uh, it was uh, early February, and the, you know how it gets back here, like in oh, February, it's like how oh, do you handle it? Warm weather, you know. And now, matter of fact, we liked it so much, we're going back down next week for next week for six days. You know, well, but dude, so, I mean. I don't know how you handle it. Like, you know, I grew up in Connecticut and it's like, you yeah. know, it's nice because you get the four seasons and you get the leaves and all that stuff. Mm. Now then Nashville, whoa, we get the four seasons in one day. I mean, you don't know what the heck the weather <laughs> is going to be here. In Nashville. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy. But wait a minute, but you, but also you spend a good bit of amount of time in the West Coast. Yeah, I did for like, oh my God, about seven years. I was about yeah. bi-coastal because I had, yeah. I just proved, you know. I did that. It's weird when you went, like I hit my mid forties and yeah. uh, after, a, you know, a marriage, I said, you know, I've always wanted to do this thing. I always wanted to be like a Jack tripper. I want to, I want to study the theatrical arts. I want to see what yeah. this is all about. And mm. somehow 
just busting my butt on Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays, I was able to get myself into some horror films and a television show. And I can't. A shock. I mean, listen, man, I um, lived there too. I was out there in the West Coast for 20 years. It's saturated. And yeah. I got to tell you, when I saw you doing the, f like, I, I forget there was a bit you did uh, and you were in a, j you were a cop. I was a cop. They, we shot you that in Queens cop, at, at the real jail in <laughs> Queens. Listen, man. I mean, I was like, listen, you just don't, oh, I'm going to act like a cop. Like, you know, it's what. That takes work. I was yeah, really impressed. Well, with that, my well thanks, man. I don't well, know if you know uh, Nick Jameson by chance. His name would Nick played bass in the band Foghat uh, okay. years ago. Yeah, yeah. And then he played with Paul Butterfield. He's done a bunch of stuff. And Nick had a band in Philly called the American Dream. He went to Woodstock. He became a, uh, a engineer there at uh, Bearsville. A couple of the studios. End up producing Foghat, Slow Ride, Fall of the City. He's playing bass on that. Yeah, yeah. He's a good buddy of mine. One day he tells me, he goes, I'm going to become a comedian. I said, like, get the hell out of here, Nick. You're not funny. I mean, <laughs> kidding, you're not funny, dude. I went to see him. I went, I moved to LA. We went to see him show. He was unbelievable. And then all of a sudden I say, hey, calls me up because, hey, I'm going to be on Seinfeld next week. I was like, what? You know, there he was on Seinfeld. So, and then he was playing the Russian prime minister on um, 24. Remember the show 24? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, with Kiefer, Kiefer Sutherland. He was the Russian. I mean, he went on. I mean, it was amazing. He just had it in him. But, you know. He unlocked I, it. Where does that come came from work? And he has a great, you know, you don't do that kind of stuff unless you're really, really smart. And you don't do the stuff you did unless you're really smart. You have that. So mm -hmm. it's in your DNA. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing you could do that kind of chameleon thing to pull that off. That's well, it's cool. it, well, I appreciate it. It's just you know, it's just it's sometimes you just. I mean, it's a testament to your friend. He really was. He had a deep belief in himself because oh. there's yeah. nothing more unreliable as a career than being a stand-up <laughs> comedian. <laughs> yeah, well, listen. Even when he told me he was going to be, I was like, "You got to be kidding me, right?" Because I didn't think he was funny, and then he was really funny. And yeah. I went to see him. He lives in Iceland now. He plays with a blues band, and he comes back and he he'll go do films and he'll do some things. Iceland, Whoa. yeah. He's still Nick Nick Jameson. If you see this, man, you know I love you. They're a hammer. <laughs> That's incredible, man. Yeah. But, yeah so yeah. so there's a lot a lot of things I wanted to talk about. You know, like I've been in I've been in um our band for. Oh my God! Almost for five well, twenty plus years, right? Yes, yeah, so it's been twenty th over twenty three years. When you were on my podcast, because I had a podcast for a bit yeah. in the pocket. Are you still doing it? Well, I, after my surgery, I, I was doing it, and then I had my surgery. I said, Take a so break. I took a break. I'm going to yeah. bring it back. Maybe yeah. when I go on the road, I may bring it back. Yeah, you've had like, Sammy Marin. When you were my on guest, there when you yeah. were my guest. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> we talked about twenty years of being in a band and what yeah. that means, and it's the same cats. You know, like we, we, we bonded over that. You know, yeah. I know what that's like, you know, they know you, you know them, you know, you know what it's like, but it's a special relationship because think about it. You haven't had relationships, but look, like, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're longer relationships that I had with my wife. You know, it's crazy. Well, you know? is this your, is this your first marriage? That you no, it's my second. Gotcha. Second. I was married for almost 20 years. And then, you know, and I have a son, a 30 year old, 32 year old son nice. who lives out in Arizona. Beautiful. And, uh, you know, it, it ran its course. We're, my ex and I are good friends. We're, we're, you know, everything's cool. I, it's funny. I end up marrying my wife. We've been friends since 1982. And then, you know, she went through a divorce. I went through a divorce and, and we end up finding each other. We'd kid people. No one else would have us. So we, but she's the love of my life and, and, and we have a good time. And, and, um, you know, it's, I'm very, I feel really lucky, probably like you, because yeah. I, you know, I see what you got going on there. Yeah, too, yeah, bro. man. Well, I mean, it's, 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 it's a definitely a crazy, the fact that you can be with people traveling the world, those same people, and have yes. this unspoken language. I mean, you know, I, I don't even, you guys don't have to do this anymore. The thing is, you just keep showing up. You're on year 42. And when I look at you guys on stage, yeah. it seems like you're loving every last second. I mean, it gets know, more precious. It really gets more yeah. precious. I know, like, listen, you know. The one thing that happened this year is having that. And I had a little more mortality moment and everything that I do, like even today, I had a session I recorded for this young cat, J Jay Barham. He's really good. And, and it just means more. Not that it mean a lot back then, but now it's like every moment, like going out on the road with those guys, like really that, you know, 
you know, I'm 67. It's like, you know, it's, a, you know, it, it, at, at some point, I mean, I'd like to do it as long as I can do it, physically yeah. can do it, but, but it means, I honestly feel like it means more to me now than it ever did. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's incredible. I mean, because touring internationally, you know, you, touring internationally, man, you guys have, you know, it just takes a lot of effort. You're flying over there and then yeah. you maybe you hook up on a bus with the trailer and then you're going, yeah. maybe you're doing the bus thing or it's even yeah. harder when you're I can't flying wait to, to every now. country, you know. Oh, jeez. I hate, listen, like Mickey, our buddy Mickey Carey, he won't fly anymore. He hates it. He's like, oh, really? Security. Mickey hates it, hates it. And I won't like flying because hey, it's a plane like that, that ruined a lot. It was like not ruined careers, but careers that like I'm not doing that anymore. Like I, 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 I'll, you know, of course, I got to fly because I'm going to Europe, but it's not, you know what I mean? It used to, do you remember when it used to be like, I'm flying, it's cool. I'm going to, you know, get in business class, cool. Nowadays, it's like, oh my God, just get me there. Security is just, a, it, it's, it's ridiculous. Well, so and being in a tour bus, you know, getting your own little, little space in there. I love there, my bunk got the usb bunk you got the little fan is it incredible people that are like how can you have you know rode around sleeping in this coffin for 27 years i'm like dude i love it i love it i'm with you i'm with you bro i my best sleep is when i put my my max in my ears and i'm in that bus i'm like in my cocoon nothing better it's, man it's amazing it, it nothing really is better man i mean i look i look forward to that kind of sleep because you hear the humming of the bus mm. yep you understand why dylan does it so much you know bob dylan he's like you know keep keep me on that bus bro. and willie and willie you know what i mean it's like yeah you know it, they just it and then you wake up in the morning and the coffee's brewing and everybody yeah. can kind of grab their coffee and kibitz and catch up with a little news what's going on today what do yeah. you what are you doing today and yeah. um you know my band plays pickleball i go to the gym yeah you do or, or, i have never played yet but i'm like you know I, i'm a little ah. bit of a jock so i i i, I well, dude because i'd look back at these videos when you were doing live aid and stuff and you always were you always had these muscle shirts and were just jacked dude and a lot of hairspray man you guys had <laughs> you guys kept like, aquanet in hair, business you know? man you know Lot of the days. Hey, Rich, I didn't even know what color my hair was for a long time. It was like back in that in those days. It's like you know, you, everybody's like coloring and everything. And I was, I was going with it, man. It was like, why not? You know, I mean, now dude, there's some photos that I see and I go, oh my god, what was I thinking? You know, but you know, that was the day, and it's showbiz, man. You do yeah. what you got to do, you know. Totally. It's like, it, 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 it. There are amazing times, you know. So. I look back on those days like they, there was nothing better. Nothing, yeah. nothing better. Well, you guys were going to do a, a, I believe, a 40th anniversary tour, and then the COVID hit, right? Yes. Yes. So, well, so like how do you? We'll, we'll spend like we'll go to Europe. We'll do six six weeks, and then we do some shows. There's talk <laughs> that we will do, you know, and and it's you know because I, I'm not privy to say, but I'm pretty sure that maybe people will be able to see us around the United States this year. I hope it's this thing that happens, which would be great, you know. Like I said, I'd love to be able to invite you to a show. You got to tell know? me off or camera. Whatever city you're playing, and he's off night. Come on, well, because I feel like you know what the answer is. You just can't announce it right now. So, so. I can't because there's some details that still have to be finished. But uh, we're getting, but I'm at the point where I'm like I'm hiring a tech. So we'll see. <laughs> nice and yeah. so uh when you go to europe do you get to use the same kit or do you have backline every night uh, well we have i have this dw kit that i that's that's at um show to show all access uh cartage the okay. uh, rolf uh this keeps my keeps the kit there it's his kit and it but i've been playing it for 20 years gotcha it's a dw kit and he's been amazing he said what should i get dave oh you know that porter and davis get that and get that little mixer right get that one thing there and you know the you know he he, he he i basically mirror everything i have here um i need to i need to figure out how to use the new spd sx pro oh yeah, 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 yeah. i got i got yeah. one of those right over there i gotta figure out how to use break, it break out but, the manual but he has that he has all this stuff nice you know, the zillion symbols and all that kind of thing that which is you know my guy so oh. it, it, it's all great stuff oh man so t tell us about this um uh in addition to the hooters you have your philadelphia project you're in the oh, pocket that's project fun. that's yeah. so much fun uh i just told ben about this ben newbury i was telling i got um well i moved back to philly after being in the west coast for 20 years my wife and i are walking through rittenhouse square and the city it changed from the time i used to live on 23rd and spruce 24th and spruce 
there was just the Phillies. I think the Phillies just won the, the World Series. Chase Utley and all this stuff. They were like rocking. When I left, you couldn't have the restaurants were having seated. They were seating out. When I left, you couldn't seat out, sit outside. Restaurants, people were seating outside. If you that, if you did that, you got fined. But uh, there was a whole, there was just the city was just amazing, you know? Yeah, yeah. Fun. So I, and I, you know, I, we just started talking about this project. I said, because I love to honor Philadelphia music and do something, right. you know, because I, I, friends that have studios and so i and being that i worked for a technology company for a little while i was managing music for a company called mp3.com for a bit and i got hip to doing some things that like i never would have learned unless i worked at a company like that you know to work in that situation understanding sure. but i wanted to record songs honoring philadelphia songs or something that they you know the song had something to do with philadelphia like young america we cut young americans to david to david bowie did the song at uh, sigma on 11th and on 11th street in the city sigma sound so i just grabbed some of the musicians that i truly love that have done stuff in philly that i always want to work with and we we record the song we work it out that they together together you know like back in the old days like a stack session sure and then um we would do a video and we'd talk about the history of the song it was like an educational thing like that so i started i think i i, I you know I, I started like i think uh 2010 or something so it's been going for a bit you know yeah. and you know i did backstabbers disco inferno um i've used the soul survivors richie and charlie from Exp you know expressway to your heart jeffrey Gaines, ben arnold patty Smythe, yeah. philadelphia people doing this thing and sometimes i get guests to join it but that's been a fun thing and it just keeps rolling people love it you know like i always say if we play a local club i get 400 people there <laughs> that's great oh yeah. my god it's yeah. always good to have your own thing on the side you know yeah. you, oh absolutely you know? absolutely absolutely i'm looking yeah. for something fun I'm, my for i'm my surprised that you doctor. don't have like 10 bands going on the way you are <laughs> yeah it's you know it's just so hard to like um yeah. you know do the road do the sessions in two cities do listen the teaching. rich oh, you're doing god. plenty bro <laughs> yeah. but i i am looking for a fun little outlet for something that we're you know you make an event of it where maybe you play it once a quarter in nashville and you yeah. pack the club you know so yeah. i'm looking for something to do something like that you know right, right, right. but you know covid You're, covid was horrible i mean how did you handle yeah, horrible. it I, I got ptsd from that thing oh it derailed so many things rich it derailed like momentum of bands i mean you know like i think i'm finally just even coming out of it myself you know right. like understanding like oh why this happened things were moving in a certain direction you know and and then you know covid happened and people rethink how they do things and listen man you know um it, it it really was it's it, it is rough it's yeah. rough and i think about the young people especially you know how you know people were just forced to be in this in, in an environment that they didn't ask for <laughs> you yeah. know what i'm saying so it, it it's crazy but listen you know we're coming out of it we're doing great and doing what we got to do and yeah you know it's uh it, it's remarkable and we all i feel lucky you know yeah. getting oh. through it you know yeah. i never listen i don't know i probably had it but i never was tested positive for it so oh yeah 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 you know I, on something dude yeah. um so with that relationship with the which you have with the guys will you go is it a thing where you guys are the type of guys that like will text each other every day or there might be months that goes by and we're like hey looking forward to the tour i'll see you in july because after no, 42 stay. years yeah um you probably yeah, appreciate we, your space we're pretty a much bit. in touch yeah you know um rob has a studio like five minutes from my place and he does oh. a lot of stuff so i'll i'll end up either bringing something i'm doing there or i'll play on something so i see him yeah you know he he, he is not there all the time but i'll run into him but we're we're you know we're we're all friends man you know, like eric will do a solo record i'll play on his stuff um yeah we we, we're we're buds man we're yeah. not more than buds we're family i mean so at we, this point but, sure but, but family could I, I you know it's a it's one of those um i i don't think i never really thought about it, but i don't think i ever go like longer than a month without talking to S at least everybody in the group you know sure. i mean even the buds i'm in a football pool with my crew like we've been doing forever and um so yeah yeah it i i couldn't imagine yeah we're it's 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 a special thing man you know yeah. you know i, you I know. believe me man i just yeah. like we and we have two of two of our guys have um you know it's a weird thing about nashville it's almost kind of like you must be present to win kind of a thing it's an expectation for you to kind of be here and yeah. um you know we've got two our steel player and our 
second electric player um they moved they were just they had their 20-year relationship with nashville and they're like you know what but I, I mean still got the gig but one moved to florida one moved to alabama yeah. and they just drive in or yeah. fly in yeah. to, to meet yeah the we got we, one of our guys fran fran and tom tommy williams who kind of was a late arrival into the band eric broke his broke his um collarbone skiing some oh about almost 15 years ago and tommy we didn't want to cancel the tour so tommy came and he used to call tommy his mini me and tommy knew all his parts so we, we and so eric would just front the band and tommy played guitar and he was such a good egg that we couldn't well couldn't say goodbye to him so now we got six of us <laughs> <laughs> and he's been everything he's such a good egg he lives in new york he's our new yorker yeah. and uh and then fran smith our bass player he lives down in south carolina so he, but everybody else and eric is by he lives here and also spends half the year in sweden so his wife is swedish so oh. he has a house in stockholm he'll be there oh, nice. and um but but the the rest of me uh, john uh, Rob and myself, you know, we're, we're, we're right here. And, uh, you know, after living out in the West coast, as much as I liked it, I, you know, I'm, I'm an East coast guy and it's just in my blood. You know, I play like that, you know, yeah. And I just, well, there's you know. an urgency. And that's the oh. thing is when I went down the rabbit hole last night, I love that about Stuart Copeland. You guys are very similar because he had that reggae, yeah. uh, world yeah. music influence, but there's, you know, none of these videos I watched, you're playing all these decades without a click track never yeah. once did you drag okay oh, so no you, dragon yeah, dragon yeah, that's I mean, never that's death that right? was a cardinal sin <laughs> but but things are like just yeah. moving yeah they're yeah. not rushing yeah. they're just yeah. confident yes yeah. it's, it's the middle of the beat pushing yeah. towards and there's yeah. that energy and you mm -hmm. could tell that everybody in the band just respected like yeah. of course it starts and stops with the drummers but everybody right. is responsible for the time yeah, yeah. but yeah. There was a period though i remember after I, th I might even talk to you and i remember actually having a conversation with mickey our friend mickey too because i mentioned him earlier Kerry, sure, yeah where the vocals had to be they, they were getting look they were getting older and they needed consistency so we we kind of messed with a couple tunes with the click and we all liked it like rob and eric they, they eric was kind of on the fence about it but then we end up adding you know more songs i don't know like 98 percent of the show is now on the click you well, know, that way like, they can I'm, fit all their words in. You know? Yeah, you know what I mean? It's like, they, they, they. I think they just, listen, I don't know about you, but after about three, like three, like four weeks on the road, and and you just get a little tired, and your senses aren't what they used to be, or or, or what they what they were in the, in the beginning of the tour. Yeah. So, you know, they were noticing that. We were all noticing that. So we all went on the click. I remember at first it was like freaking me out a little bit playing – you know, 10,000 people, everybody gets ramped up. You got to like pull the horses back a little bit. Come on, man. And then they all now, you know, I mean, for a little while, a couple guys didn't want it. You know, I said, because I said, well, you're going to have to learn to do it. But now it's like a second nature. It's like the other guy with, it's like Sam Clayton in the band. We actually call Sam Clayton from Little Fee. We would call that, that little, uh, the, the, the click. It's, it, we call it Clayton. <laughs> oh, that's, oh, yeah. It's always nice. It's fun to name your click, you know? Yeah, it's Clayton. Um, it's that's, Clayton. That is funny. It's Clayton, man. you know? So. Oh, but it's just so good. And it's just the soundtrack yeah. of my youth. I remember my sophomore year in high school, and we danced, was on MTV twice an hour, 24 hours a day. Wow. And now it was listen, just so man, unique. You know man, what? The, the mandolin, the melodica, yeah. what? Yeah. And then the, just a really cool band. You guys were game changers yeah you know listen we had fun you know i mean i i remember uh you know we started just incorporating like a lot of different sounds to our music uh, the melodica the was gong. That, you know w which is the hooter when people would ask you well, why'd you name your name why'd you name your band after a restaurant we had nothing to do with the restaurant matter of no. fact, we were around before that you know yeah i don't look good in orange shorts but anyway <laughs> that, that was Got that. but um boom you know um but uh we we were around before that you know and of course but the the melodica was we had a friend of ours that when we were recording eric rob and i were recording something at a rehearsal spot and he would call the melodicas play that hooter thing add that to the tune and that just became a signature and so you know we started writing songs like rob and eric had this song fighting on the same side it was the intro was was the melodica and it was just a signature that we had so it, it, you know different instruments i mean those guys are always looking at like wacky keyboards analog stuff and yeah. how to add it and and it was always i th 
we've been working on a little thing. We've been jamming on some more reggae stuff. So I'm 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 hoping to be able to play some people some cool new things with that kind of stuff we've been talking about. Yeah. Um but I'm I'm just excited about the future with the band, which is kind of weird after 43 years well because a lot of times people just get stuck into a thing it's like all right people go see the shows they want to hear the hits so you're like here's a new yeah. one off of our new record everybody goes to the bathroom but it's yes. like you know you are pushing the envelope you guys are wanting to create new stuff and man you yeah. really and you got you help my playing man the mark of a of a good drummer is to be able, able to get a consistent cross stick and <laughs> yeah hey you're, yeah you're, i would play that i would practice with that man yeah you know? wow yeah. yeah well i know you're good at it i know you're really great at it because i saw you do it and it's like yeah i i, I love that thing you know it's uh, uh it, you know i i can't get enough of it you know you mentioned Stuart <laughs> copeland a beautiful you know great cross stick you hear Picaro the stuff he would do back in the day even just you play in just a shuffle and then he would do a cross stick it was like oh my god human touch yes you track human touch you hear that like the stuff he does ridiculous you know i mean yeah. it's amazing there's so many remarkable incredibly gifted musical drummers that you could like that's the great thing about the internet you could see these guys that are just wow yeah you know youtube you university think? man you know it's like a, yeah people yeah. ask me all the time hey should i send my daughter or son to, like it's like you know you know if you can afford it you know it's four years they're gonna have a deep you know focus but then a lot of people they want to learn a skill it's like how to you type in how to how to fix something at your house and 60 videos come up you know what yeah I mean? I mean and that I guess you know uh yeah it's it's a shame there are somebody that like you need a tastemaker to tell you this is what you ought to watch you know yeah, hey yeah. You, you know you're you i wanted to mention a drummer that i love down in nashville greg morrow oh wonderful you know when we did we did a record in memphis and i didn't even know i didn't know who he was he was friends with joe hardy and i needed a drum set yeah and he said my buddy greg will will get his drum set and you know he came in it couldn't have been the nice the nicest guy on the planet so he cool. gave me i remember i used his dw kit and i used a couple of his snare drums and then i saw him play and heard him play i was like oh my god so solid I mean, ah ridiculous you know so I solid mean, and musical no he's another he's the one of the staples of our of our scene yeah. and uh i think i did a i did a feature article on him in modern drummer in like 2015 wow. 2014 15. he goes yeah. he, he's so humble he said who who's gonna read this and i said <laughs> millions of drummers uh, yeah and he goes what from yeah. like me oh shucks you know he's that guy but that's part of his charm is that he yeah. he's a vicious beast of a musician drummer yeah. but he's a he's a just a oh shucks yeah. guy you know i know i know that's what struck me i was like he was just the nicest cat and i and i and i i didn't realize at the time i it was this is this is 1990 he was still living in memphis at the right. time yeah. so it was 90 91 92 and he you know but again you know it just only fi go figure you know he went down there and he, he just played on everything i sure know? did no no it blossomed it was like one phone call and it led to another yeah. thing and now yes yeah. he's, he's a staple of this scene man it's really really yeah. incredible hey so you're you're a, a big a big sports fan you know who i had yeah. on my podcast the original phillies fanatic dave raymond he was the I guy David. that he, i know him right so yes. he he was like on an early episode of the podcast and now he's taken his adventures as being a mascot and is a is a motivational speaker get out Isn't i didn't crazy? know that about him I, I haven't seen him in ages but i i remember when he was the philly fanatic yeah you, you, you know? gotta you gotta i'll connect you guys please please you, I'd love you, that. you guys can go have a uh, like so where do you go are you like a, a cheesesteak guy uh yeah yeah i might listen man you get a great cheesesteak uh, there's a place called in concha there's a place in roxborough called barry's rock and cheesesteak everybody goes della sandra's uh, it's okay it's good it's good cheesesteak yeah. jim's pat's gino's but my favorite i love barry's cheesesteak and uh, i'll tell you there's a place called the white house in atlantic city that you get like an, uh they, and they call it a sub there but yeah. you get a, a, you know an italian a, you get the uh cheesesteak sub with lettuce and tomato and fried onions it's add some red peppers it's you're off oh, i love the red peppers off the hook i don't like the cheese whiz thing you know no 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 i do i i'll do just a little bit but i i'll go light cheese too but but i gotta have a little bit of cheese on it yeah but yeah but, but uh fried onions that that it's the bread man it's like anything else the bread that they do there mm. that's 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 my third of my two favorites you know 
Uh, yeah, they're my two favorites. I like that. That's, that's uh, Barry's and Roxborough and the White House. You got to go on Atlantic Avenue. You can't go to one in the casino because everybody's trying to like replicate it. Uh, now nah, you got to go to one on Atlantic Avenue. Okay. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'll have to double check with you. <laughs> you do, when, man. when I'm in those cities, man. Yeah. man. Um, let me tell you, this place is dangerous, man, with food because it's such great food. Well, it's know? all carbs. Great Italian I mean, food here too, know, man. It's, it's all carbs because, you know, it's, you know, you, you got, you got all the, the, the crust on the pizza and then you yeah. got the, you got the, you got the cheesesteaks, all the, the thick bread. And then you got the, <laughs> um, the bagels in New York, man. You know, it's like, and you can't replicate a New York bagel anywhere because of the water. Yeah. Yeah, dude, when you went out to California, it was like somebody gave me a bagel. I said, you give me a Kaiser roll. What are you doing? <laughs> it's like, come on, man. I He's know. like, yeah, it's a bagel. That ain't a bagel. I do, <laughs> I do miss those taco trucks in the valley, man. Oh, you, know, you just roll me up. Too. And, There's a place oh. when I lived there in Long Beach that I used to go to that I would get off the 405 and I would go into uh, I would go into Long Beach. And there was a place on 4th Street and uh the burrito there was off the hook. And I still remember, in fact, when I go back, I'm, I'm going there. <laughs> That's right. We got our to, there, our to do I'm list for, for food. And then uh, just to uh, promote your business, man, are you still doing the Dave U drums? Yeah. 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 Matter of fact, it was funny. I, I, I do, you know, I got this, this website, Dave, you drums and, you know, people could send me a track, you go to track and, you know, I cut it as pro as I can get it and uh, send them about multiple files and then they can do what they will with it. And it's fun. I love doing that. I had a yeah. fun time doing that. And I got my project and I play with a couple bands, smash palace. I play with your buddy, Kenny Aronson in a band called um, QDK the bass player that's awesome and give me my best man with, 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 with john, john eddie, eddie man you, yeah do yeah you, do you, you know what john kenny? eddie is up to man i think he's doing something i don't if i'm if i'm mistaken i think he's working on something with the uh with uh netflix Presley? yes and I, so it's coming out friday on wow. netflix and it's uh it's Agent Elvis. Oh and my the, God. The cast is incredible. It's like Johnny Depp, Matthew McConaughey, yeah. like all A listers. So, our little friend John Eddie took his songwriting skills and turned it into TV and film. And he's, he's a smart guy and he's wow. such an articulate guy and he's a great writer. I mean, I, I mean, he writes great songs, but I'm telling you, when he just tells a story, yeah. I mean, he can have you pee in your pants. Yeah, you know? he's spellbound. He, he, and, he's yeah. a sweetheart. He's such a good guy. Yeah, that's cool. Know, that's it's small world, man. It, it really, yeah, man. Really, we know a lot of the same people. I know it's crazy. It's man. cool, man. Well, listen, if you make your way up to Philadelphia, shame on you if you don't call me because I could take you out to a great dinner. This is happening. <laughs> this the, dude, even this here is happening. at this yeah. home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, man. Oh, so where do you where do you track the drums? Do you do it at your place or do you go down to Rob's? Uh, I can do it here. Yeah. I sometimes do it here. And then like, there's like Rob studios, just five minutes away from here. Yeah. And it's a great, you know, he's got the, an API console. He got oh it from God. Detroit and got all the great mics. And I got some pretty good mics too, but like today I worked at Gradwell house in Haddonfield, New Jersey, Haddontown, New Jersey. And that's another great room, you know, but I can do it here, but my, I need to kind of get some things dialed in. And sometimes it's easier to have somebody doing the, Oh, I, have, stuff I, instead of I always have an engineer. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I've had to learn way too much Pro Tools than I care to say. <laughs> well, it's it's a difference between enjoying yourself or yeah. being completely frustrated. You yeah. Know? So yeah. I'd rather enjoy myself. You, and, yeah, you know. I'm telling you, you and, 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 and when you have somebody else that's sort of like really, really good and is getting it all dialed in, tweaking things like that, you can't beat it. You know, you can't beat it. You can't beat it. So where should everybody look for the uh, tour dates, the European tour dates? Well, there's a website, HootersMusic.com. If you okay. go to hootersmusic.com there's the tour dates will be there uh and and probably more updated stuff in the next couple of weeks you can check out some things that you and i were talking about you know the europe stuff we have some stuff in we're playing in, some local dates we're playing in quaker 10 two nights in cape may new jersey at the end of the summer and uh but you know like i said the, the u.s thing that i'm not at liberty to talk about yet is that close so out. close it's so, so close, close. Oh so man! Close. Well, I just wanted to say thank you for uh, for joining me, and thank you Dude. for inspiring me as a young man, and thank you for changing musical history. And congratulations on over four decades of playing with the same guys. Rich, I, I got to tell you, when you called, I said, "Are you kidding me, man? You, 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 what you're doing is amazing, and I'm honored to be here with you. You are inspiring young people, and you're a good guy. And I am, uh, I was, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled that uh, to to be a part of this. This is great. I was oh. honored to be here, bro. 
Oh, man, it is my pleasure. You got to get up there and uh, finish that dinner with your bride up there, man. <laughs> I'm going to get more Bruce stories from, from Ben. <laughs> oh, for sure, man. And hey, to all the listeners out there, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe, share, rate, and review. It helps people find the show. Leave us a five-star rating. If you won't give me a five-star rating, tell me why. I'll come do your laundry. I'll cut your grass. I'll do your taxes. I'm looking for a five-star rating. And as always, thanks to our friend Jim McCarthy. I usually have a co-host, David. Jim McCarthy, Jim McCarthy voiceovers.com. He's a voiceover artist. He'll produce your podcast, and he plays drums for fun, which is, hey, he's maybe he's smarter than all of us he's yeah, just, right, he, he right, keeps exactly. it stress free man but yeah, uh, yeah. but thanks again David I really appreciate it man man pleasure was mine thank you so much it was a blast God bless brother and to all the listeners we'll see you next time thanks so much this has been the Rich Redmond Show subscribe rate and follow along at richredmond.com forward slash podcasts 